All right, boys and girls, Mr. Remedy is back with our fourth and final writing lesson for this week. Today, we are wrapping up our pre-writing uh, step in our writing process. Today, we're talking about brainstorming when writing an argumentative or persuasive text. Our learning goal today is that we are learning how to brainstorm when writing an argumentative text. Along the way, there's some success criteria for you to help, you know, really kind of guide your learning and help you understand that you really are grabbing a hold of this idea. Uh, first and foremost, you'll be able to say that I can identify my audience, followed by I can clearly state my position. Uh, number three, I can recognize the opposing view. And finally, uh, I can generate ideas based on my position and audience. Uh, some quick vocab review for us. Uh, we are talking about audience position and opposing view. The audience is the person or people that will read your writing and that that writing is directed to. Uh, the audience will consider the writing, the position, and the content of the writing. Your position is your opinion or thoughts on the topic provided. And the opposing view is an opinion that is in direct opposite of, the, of your position or your view. Uh, let's talk a little bit about brainstorming. I think you guys are really good about generating ideas out there across Conference Cove, but let's look at a couple of little finer points about brainstorming when it comes to persuasive text. And first and foremost, we are kicking right along with uh, our example prompt, should kids join organized sports? When we brainstorm, we've already picked the position. So brainstorming is kind of a, a combination of picking a position plus identifying your audience. Okay? So we think to ourselves, picking a position, we've done that. Yes, kids should join organized sports <clears throat> is the position that we're taking. Identifying your audience is something we did earlier in the week. And for this specific assignment or lesson, we're talking about your teachers. And a lot of you kiddos out there, I'm willing to bet that some of you think like this little guy. The teacher is going to read this. I should change my position so I get a good grade. And I am here to tell you, eh, that's a little bit of a, a wonky attitude to have. Okay? Uh, when teachers are reading persuasive or argumentative text, we are looking for some skills and ideas that you have generated we are looking for you to clearly state your position and to include or generate ideas that support that position that are consistent with that position okay? we are not and i repeat teachers are not looking for their students to have the same position as they do um, it is a um, it is a wonderful thing to have different opinions. That is what makes the world go round, and that is what makes conversation and discussion so great. Uh, so your teachers are not looking for you to agree with a position that you think the teacher may have. Um, we are looking for you to exhibit those skills, um, i.e., clearly stating your position. Uh, writing with details uh, and including ideas that support that position. Okay. So whatever position you've chosen, uh, if you've followed the steps from yesterday's lesson and you know that it is a clear position um, and that you do actually believe or hold that position, then stick to it. Your teacher is not going to fault you at all for, uh, for having an opinion or position that differs from their own. All right, with that said, let's move on to a little bit of a brainstorming checklist, okay? When we do our brainstorming, we're going to write ideas that support your position, ideas that strongly appeal to your audience, and we'll see how that, uh, what that looks like in just one second. And we are going to include nothing that supports the opposite view, okay? When writing an argu argumentative or persuasive essay, the moment you include uh, something that supports the opposite view, your uh, credibility immediately kind of becomes diminished and your argument becomes weaker. So we want ideas that only support our position, 
uh, ideas that strongly appeal to our audience, and nothing that supports the opposite view. Okay? So let's kind of go on over to our brainstorming uh, graphic organizer. Pow, there it is. Hey, Mr. Remedies has already uh, filled this out for you based on some of the ideas that we have. So we're in the middle here. I have my topic uh, for this. I'm just going to write my position. My position is kids should join organized sports. Okay. Uh, detail one I have uh, because they can get the opportunity to travel to other places. Uh, number two, they can earn scholarships and get into college and, and maybe make it to the pros. Detail three, kids can stay out of trouble. Four, learn, they can, uh, if kids join organized sports, they can learn life skills like responsibility, time management, and teamwork, uh, depending on the sport, obviously. And number five, they can make new friends. Now, this list, I bet you guys are saying to yourself, this looks an awful lot like some of the quick brainstorming we did earlier in the week when we identified our audience. And you are right. However, some of the ideas have changed because now that I know my audience is going to be my teacher and more than likely my parents, I can eliminate and only generate some of the ideas we talked about previously. Um, if you notice, there is no mention of uh, kids being healthy or disease or disease free um, because we want, as our checklist says, we want strong uh, arguments that will appeal greatly to our audience. Okay? Now, I'm not saying your, your mom or dad or your teacher doesn't care if you're healthy or not, but there might be some stronger arguments, some details that that will appeal stronger to what they hold dear. Okay? So like, for instance, um, a teacher may, they may value learning uh, responsibility, time management, and teamwork a little bit more than overall general health. Okay? Uh, if we include this detail and we expand on it when we write, we might have a better, idea, a better chance of changing our teacher's mind or really supporting our, our, top, our position here. All right. Uh, so it's okay to change based uh, based on who our audience is. It's okay to change our arguments that support our detail, uh, that support our position, but not our position in general. All right, uh, let's. You'll have a chance to do this with our uh, writing prompt today. So you, this isn't the first. This isn't the last time you'll see this today. All right, let's move on to a review. We talked about how brainstorming is the last step in pre-writing for an argumentative essay. It is generally the same. You're just you're generating ideas uh, for your topic. But in this case, your topic is your position. Brainstorming happens after you've identified your audience and position. Okay? And don't forget your checklist. On that brainstorming piece, we want to generate ideas that support your position, ideas that strongly appeal to your audience. And we want to uh, we want to make sure that there's nothing on there that supports the opposite view. All right, guys, you guys are going to have a chance to, to uh, be turned loose and do this for this week's writing prompt. So as always, I've been Mr. Remedies. You guys have been amazing, and we will see you 